Hey guys, Aaron here. Today I wanted to do a quick video to answer the question of does where you hold your torque wrench matter? So I was using a torque wrench in one of my recent videos and somebody left a comment saying that I was doing it wrong, that I was holding it at the end of the torque wrench and that I should be holding it in the center of the handle. And that got me thinking, does it really matter? So I went straight to YouTube, couldn't find anything really definitive, went to Google and found some better answers. So I thought that I would uh, make a little presentation on what I found. And while I do not consider myself an expert in this, I did almost have a math minor in college. So I was really confused as to where it mattered based on all of the kind of diagrams and math that I had seen. All right, so this is the diagram that I kept seeing everywhere, which was kind of what I was thinking, that torque equals force times the length. So yes, based on where you grab a torque wrench, a uh, different amount of force is required to get the same torque. So if we wanted to torque this to 20 foot-pounds, uh, that's how it's, I heard somebody else say you're supposed to say pound feet, but if you look at the actual torque wrench, it says foot pounds. Everybody says foot pounds. So if you wanted uh, this to be tightened to 20 foot pounds, so over here, it only requires 10 pounds of force down in this direction because you have two feet times your 10 pounds and you have 20 foot pounds. If you were to grab the wrench here, you would have to apply more force. It would be harder, which makes sense, to uh, pull it from here. So if you apply 20 foot pounds of force, you have uh, one foot times the 20 pounds, and you are back at 20 foot pounds. So, uh, but in my head, I was thinking, yes, you have to push, you have to pull harder here, but a torque wrench has its mechanism built in right here, and this mechanism doesn't know where you're holding the torque wrench. All it's doing is measuring the force. So it's measuring either, either place you hold this, once it gets to 20 pounds, it's gonna click. So it doesn't care where you're holding it. So why does it matter where you're holding it on a torque wrench? So based on this explanation, it made no sense, but doing some research, I found something interesting. So in my research, I found two different explanations of why you can't just use simple math to calculate torque with a torque wrench. Turns out when you read manufacturer's specifications in them, they will tell you to hold it in the middle of the handle often. And they will also say that they have a length dependent torque wrench. Well, actually they usually don't tell you that. You have to research and figure that out yourself. But some torque wrenches supposedly are not length dependent where it actually doesn't matter where you hold them. For my research, the most common length dependent type is the click style and it makes sense to me now. And in doing my research with the snap-on that is in electric readings with some kind of magic up here in the head, I'm still not sure if this is length dependent or not. I couldn't find anything either way. So if you know, please let me know in the comments below. But let me try to explain why this one is length dependent. Uh, usually if you read about it, they give you some quick verbiage about how the design of them doesn't have where your bolt is directly here in its uh, measurement, but with no further explanation. And when I look at this, I was like, yeah, it's in the middle, of course. Why, why would this be different? Okay, so if you look at this torque wrench, you can see it does not look like this. If this was just one solid piece, then yes, you would be able to use that kind of math. But this is not just a solid bar. The first explanation that I read online was that the tubular style of the click torque wrench or some other torque wrenches actually flex when you apply that pressure. And I was like, aha, well that makes sense because it's not just a solid bar, so you can't use the same math on it. You have to calibrate in, if you will, that flex when you are applying the pressure. So if you are applying pressure here, that part's not gonna flex very much. If you're applying pressure here, that bar is gonna indeed flex more, and so that is calculated into uh, their reading from over here. So that alone made sense to me, and I was, like, I was like, okay, I could buy that if that flexed, but I mean, how much does that really flex? 
But the second thing I read made even more sense to me. It's more mathematical, so let me try to draw it out and explain it a little bit. So you can see, and if you've used a torque wrench with the click style, you know, you probably never looked at it closely, but there is a pivot point right here. There's a bolt right here holding two pieces together, so you've probably never thought of what's on the inside of this, so let me try to draw that. If you look in here, you can see that this head is attached to a bar that goes inside this tube. So for simplicity, I'm gonna to try to use this same diagram that we already have here that would make sense. And I'm going to draw the rest of this around it. So now what we have, so now what we have is a collar around this thing that comes down, here's your handle, like this. And inside here, you know that there's this cap and this thing that you twist and the handle turns and that's how you adjust your torque settings. So what's in here is your little cap and you have a spring that goes through here. And then there is a little clutch with a ball socket right here. So when you're adjusting your torque, you are adjusting the pressure on this spring here that pushes this plate with a little ball against it. So what happens is after you set your desired torque and you start applying force, once you reach the force that you have dialed in with this spring, this pivot arm will come down and disengage this ball from the clutch. So from our previous example, if we wanted to do 20 foot-pounds, you would dial this in to 20 foot-pounds, lock it in, and it is calibrated to uh, apply force from the middle of the handle and make that thing disengage. So with our old calculation of force times length, what we were counting on was that this was the length, right? And you can see that the pivot point is actually here, not all the way from here. So now you can see that this was our old length. So let's say this was our two feet. That is what the manufacturer calibrated with this whole spring and clutch setup. So now I think just visually you can tell that if you tried to use this at one foot, that uh, this whole calibration mechanism is not going to work properly. So I hope this diagram visually makes it easy to understand, but while doing this research, I also learned that this isn't even the right equation in the first place. That's a little advanced topic. While I'm on this video, I found some other cool things about torque that I would just want to talk about at the end of this video. So yes, it does matter where you hold it, but let's dive into some more torque stuff. Let's start with the basics. What is torque? Torque is a measure of how much a force acting on an object causes that object to rotate. Now an object rotates about an axis, and we're going to call that axis the pivot point, and we're going to label that O here in this diagram. We're going to call the force F, which is the green line, and the distance from the pivot point to where the force acts is called the moment arm, but we're going to call that R here in this diagram. Now you might remember from math class that this distance, R, is a vector that is pointing from the object away towards where the force is applied. So in all of our simplified math diagrams that we've seen, torque equals R times F, or the distance times the force. But it really equals R times F times the sine of our angle of the force that is applied down there. So if we're thinking about this as a torque wrench again, and we are applying force straight down here, our angle is 90 degrees. So you probably don't remember, but from math class, the sine of 90 degrees equals one. So therefore, in this case, it does equal the distance times the force. So we don't have to worry about the sine. So it makes sense because if you think about if you were to apply force directly this way, that would be 180 degrees. And the sine of 180 degrees is zero. If you were to apply force in this direction, there is going to be no angle. So again, the sine of zero is also zero. So no torque would be applied. So if you're applying force this way or this way, that's not going to rotate. You have to have some angle of force from some direction to make an object rotate on that axis. 
typically when you have a torque wrench, the head of your torque wrench is going to be here. You're going to have a socket on it that is on a bolt and it's going to be rotating around this axis when you pull on it and you're not going to be pulling it in weird funky directions. Like we learned, as long as you're applying force to the middle of the handle where you should be, the head or the mechanism inside your torque wrench is going to be what's doing all the measurements for you. Typically, people aren't talking about this with torque wrench calculations because they're assuming that you're pushing down at a 90 degree angle on your torque wrench and therefore it drops out of the equation. Okay, back to car stuff. Oops. All right, back to car stuff. We use torque to create a tension. How do we do that? In the car world, we're usually trying to attach two pieces together. All right, let's take this example where we have a bracket and we want to attach it to part of the car. And this part of the car happens to have uh, some threads for bolts to go through. So let's draw a bolt head. And here's our bolt that is gonna go through the bracket into here. And of course, this is threaded. So the thread angle of your bolt, when you start tightening it, is gonna convert that force into tension, stretching the bolt. Now the amount of tension that you create here is critical. So why do manufacturers have all these torque specs? What does it really matter? So if you have the proper tension on this bolt, it is gonna be at its optimum working efficiency at keeping these two pieces together. So if you have too little tension for this, when your car is driving around, bouncing over things, this can wiggle around and work itself loose and fall out. Conversely, if you have too much tension on this and your bolt is overly stretched, it could snap and also therefore come apart. So every bolt has a correct optimum tension or torque for every application. So it's very important to not only know, but to apply the correct value when you're tightening things on your car. That's why in all my videos, I try to provide you with those correct torque specs. All right, hopefully I dove deep enough into torques and torque wrenches for you guys to get some more understanding. So thank you to that guy that left a comment in my video prompting me to do some research on this. Hopefully you have learned something today. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. And if there's any other content like this that you would like to see, go ahead and tell me about that and maybe you'll prompt another video. So thanks for watching guys. See you on the next one.